Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I'm also super glad to be here. This is a 2021 Toyota Tacoma. I think it's a, yeah, TRD 4x4. TRD does not stand for turd. Everybody calls them turds, but that's not what TRD is. Uh, I believe TRD is gonna be Toyota Racing Development. I, th I think that's what that stands for. I don't know though, I'm not a Toyota owner, so I'm not uh, affluent in all of the lingo. Hmm, what, have, uh, what am I missing here? Oh, it's a push button turd. Beginning engine stochic sequence. There we go, hit the button, fire right up, no problem. So this particular Toyota here comes to us for some suspension modifications with 68,279 miles on the odometer. Uh, my customer had stated that they put a front lift kit on it to level it out and now it has like this bulldog squatted truck look where it's sitting higher up in the front than it is in the rear so what we're going to do today is disconnect the rear leaf springs and insert a lifting block with some new u-bolts to raise this thing up to a more appropriate ride height and that will be our goal so what i'm going to do is bring this thing in on flat level ground we're going to measure the ride height at the wheel wells. Oh, hang on a second, he was sweeping. Hey, did I, did, am I getting in your way of what you were doing? Yes. I can wait. No, 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 oh, no, 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 here. No, 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 oh, no, no, oh, oh, no, no, no. I'll just do it over here, it's fine. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a tape measure real quick and we're gonna measure the ride height uh, at the wheel arches. Now, as per specification, the engineers say that measuring ride height at the wheel well arches is not exactly appropriate uh, due to various factors like um, trim pieces and or inconsistencies in the tires, things like that. But we're not trying to get a true spec ride height out of it. We just wanna measure for comparison purposes. Hope that makes sense. All righty, so I've got a trusty tape measuring device here. Now, sorry, you European types, this is gonna be in fractions, I believe, but we are looking at 37. We're going right through the middle of the, uh, of the hubcap there. That, to my eyeball, looks like 37 and an eight. We're gonna call it 37 and one eighth inches. Now, I realize there's gonna be some discrepancy on that, so you guys write these all down, and we'll compare them later. 37 and an eight. This one right here is 36 and a quarter. We're gonna call it that, so we're roughly one inch short back here. Roughly. This one, we have 37, oh, where are we? 37.5. That's what that one's looking like. Sorry, 36.5. 36.5. And this one, about 37 and 3 eighths. That's what we'll call that one, 37 and 3 eighths. So you guys write all those down, but roughly we're sitting about an inch higher in the front than we are in the rear. So what my customer wants to do is install some one inch blocks between the axles and the leaf springs and that's gonna raise the rear end of this vehicle up, in theory, one inch. Now, in reality, numerically specified lift and lowering kits do tend to change things overall. So we put a one inch spacer back there, we might end up getting one and a quarter out of it, and then we'll gain a quarter inch out of the front. Sometimes things, uh, they, they don't always add up in a linear fashion. Uh, for example, once upon a time, I installed a uh, lowering kit on my S10, it was uh, two inch spindles in the front and then two inch lowering springs in the front and it actually dropped the front down over six and a half inches. But four and four should have been four inches but it came down six overall. Jesus has given me the green light to park the auto. So we're gonna nose her in on the rack, get it set up, up in the air and we'll begin disassembling our rear suspension components. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look who that guy is. Okie dokes, the rack is set. Black subscribe button. We'll run this thing up in the air. We'll get it all the way up to a decent working ride height. 
and then we'll get started. All right, we're setting her down on the locks now so it's stable and safe. And I did not catch the lock on this side. You guys see that? Let's go back up, we'll let it level. Huh, yeah, that lock didn't want to go. Let's go down to the next one. Okay, release, down again. There we go, they both caught. It must have been like a micro nanometer off. Okay, we're going to need some safety devices here because we're going to be unloading the weight of the axle from the chassis. So I'm gonna place this jack stand underneath of the trailer hitch and that's gonna help stabilize the vehicle while we're jostling it around and switching the, uh, the amount of weight and balance on the vehicle here. So this guy goes under the hitch, all the way down, slide it in. And we don't need to put a bunch of, do not need to put a bunch of pressure on this. All we need to do is tighten it until there's some weight being taken by the stand. We can use the trailer hitch to gauge it. There we go. Now she's stable. Okay, one more jack stand coming in. This one is going to be here to hold up the axle itself as we unbolt it from the leaf spring. Here on the bench, I've got the lifting blocks in position here. So these are supposed to be one inch blocks. We've got washers, we have new nuts, and we have new square cut U-bolts. Now the, the origination of the name U-bolt is because they were U-shaped because they used to just wrap around the axle and then bolt the axle to stuff. Uh, since those days, we've changed them to a square cut type. But we can see what we have here is we've got the bolt, you bolt running around holding the spring to the axle. We're gonna take these guys out, drop the axle down. We're gonna take that little spacer, stick that thing in the hole, and then bolt it back together with these replacement U-bolts. Uh, you're only supposed to use U-bolts one time. You're not supposed to reuse them. Okay, so now that we know what we're doing and why we're doing it, let's get around to actually doing it. So I had to get the, uh, the tripod jack stand out because the other one was uh, actually a little bit too short. But this one's gonna be safer and more stable since we are gonna have this axle kind of dangling down a little bit. I'm only gonna do one side at a time, that way we remain safe and the axle doesn't fall off and try to kill me. So what we need to do, pull these uh, four nuts off, these two and these two, and we'll get this uh, spring assembly disassembled. Well, that was almost a tongue twister, I had to think about it. Anyway, 19 millimeter impact socket coming in. Where am I going here? That's the wrong way. There we go. It's so torquey. Uh huh. Now, this bottom plate here is going to be reused. So we're going to set this down in the exact orientation that it came out. We can go ahead and pull the bolts out of it. Or hammer them out if they don't want to come out. There we go. Okay, both bolts are removed. So now... I need to let this jack down some, and the axle is not moving. That's cute. I'm wondering what the deal is. Is the shock absorber hanging on to it? I think so. Okay. Um, new plan: ratchet straps. Wait, that's not gonna work. I mean, it would, but it's too hard. I was gonna put a ratchet strap on this cross member, and then around. The, uh, the spring right here and just use the ratchet strap to pull the spring up. But I think I can probably just get the appropriate amount of space for the pry bar. Yeah, yeah I'll just do that. So here, reach around from the back with my pry bar. Hit you guys in the face with a pry bar. Hmm, is this gonna work? 
I may be a little overzealous here with my efforts. It might not work. Ratchet strap might have been a good idea. Anyway, just slide that guy in. Now we've got to get some more out of it. You can see this pin right here. There's another pin right there at the bottom of the spring, and that's there to locate the spring so it can't slide sideways off the axle. So now, pry it up some more. Need a bigger pry bar. Hang on here. Danger zone. It's, uh, pretty close to slipping out of there. Look at that. Okay, bigger pry bar coming in. I'm prying against the axle tube and up onto the spring. You guys okay? In but not aligned. There we go. We're gonna take that so it's straight. I think we're good. Okay, new U bolt coming in. Slide that over. Same thing on this one here. Drop her down. And then down below, we've got our dangly bits here that are going to meet up with the bracket. Uh-oh. See that? They're spread out more than the holes are. That's fun. Squeeze them together. There. We're just kind of squeezing. That's enough to flex it to get the hole to slide in. Ratchet strap. We'll ratchet strap them together. It's safe. Okay. That stuff's in. Time for nuts and washers. We got one washer there, one nut. Dulce. Face. And four. <laughs> so what I'll do, same socket. We'll put a torque limiting stick on it so it's not to over torque these. Let's get the wrong size socket, try again. These are now 22 millimeter, not 19. Uh-oh. Running out of threads. Yeah, I'm all out of threads. I need these all to be even, and currently they are not. It's close. So here, let's check up at the top and make sure that everything is in its groove and in the correct position. That's correct. This one, let's see. That one is also correct. It's in its proper groove. Okay. That's lining up correctly. Witness marks right here, here, centered in the right direction. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is get a sawzall, we're gonna cut these off. I'll use a grinder. We'll cut these guys off, that way we don't have bolts sticking out too far from the bottom. Because you'll notice this side does not have bolts sticking out, and this side does. So we're gonna chop that off. All right, eye and ear protection is engaged. I'm going here with a saw and chop these guys off.
try that again. is done let's move over and get the uh the other side disassembled next so although the axle didn't seem to care that it was left alone all by itself i'm still going to put this uh this jack stand under it so it can't fall down safety okay coming back in with the 19. there we go Dirt. Ding. There we go. That's both U bolts. Come out. U bolt hammer. Come on. Wiggle it some. There. Okay, pry bar action. Okay, pry bar is coming in again here. This one looks a little tighter than the first one. I remember the axle came down slightly when we unbolted the first one. No matter, two pry bars. There we go, pry that up. And the block is coming in. Higher here. See, I'm keeping my fingers out of this little danger zone, right? I don't want to smash them off. That would be bad. Lose my flange. So close. But not there yet. Slide it over. Hmm. No. No, no. Are you okay, man? Definitely hearing things. You are losing your head. I wasn't even. No. Taylor Swift is not a psyop. That's what the what they said. Just hammer it in there. Come on, you. All right, hail mary time with the pry action. A little bit more. Okay, one pin is in. The bottom pin is not. Watch this. It needs to come back this way, like, oh, what can I see? Very slight amount. <laughs> well, it's not in there. That's the problem. The axle needs to come this way 
uh, about a quarter of an inch. So I can try to push it, which I have been doing, or I can try to pull it. So we're gonna go ahead and get a ratchet strap. To the ratchet strap drawer. There we go. Okay, one end, we're gonna hook it in right there. And then the other end, I'm just gonna hook it up to the trailer hitch. That'll do. And we're gonna ratchet strap this, this direction, pulling on the axle and lining up the pins. Get tight. I think I went a little too far, so we're gonna back it off like one notch here. Try that. How's it looking? Let me see. Okay, we're really, really, really close. Like super close. The block needs to go that way just a bit, which means the spring needs to go that way. Got it. That's in. It is seated, so I can release the ratchet strap. Get that out of the way. bolts coming in to drop them down front one or back one there's the front one bottom plates coming in next I just dropped my nuts they were in my lap and now they're on the ground Shaisa. Everything about this side is slightly more difficult than the first side. What is this? Hmm. There. Wow. Okay, fasteners coming in, falling off, going back. So just like the other side, we're gonna run these down and then cut them off and then torque them. Axle is now secure. We don't need the jack stand anymore. Let me get that out of the way. Incoming loud noises. Let's chop these guys off.
Okay, let's get some torque in these fasteners now. Gravity. Seriously? Okay, we're good, it's torqued. Okie doke, so everybody's torqued, they're tight. The pins are all aligned with the holes. The toolbox is cleared. Let's get the jack stand out of the trailer hitch area. And we'll go ahead and let this thing down and then re-measure the ride height. Let's roll this thing right on out of the way. There we go. Whew. Okay. Looking good, looking good, looking good, everything's good. Get a second chance subscribe button. Off the lock. Very good. Lock release. And come down. All the way down. Okay, on the ground, let's get the tape measure and measure this out. But before we do that, we need to move the vehicle, drive it around some, and let the suspension settle. Because when we lifted it up, the wheels in the front especially found themselves at a different camber angle. So we need to let that angle work itself out. So we're just gonna go back and forth through the parking lot a couple times just so it's all settled. Then we'll come back in and then re-measure our uh, our right height at the center of the wheel well arches. You headed out? I am. You can't go? I have to, I have to force your mandatory video appearance. Oh, hi. I yeah. thought I already did that. No, no that was a different video. Oh, this is a whole okay. other one. Hi. Yeah. Bye. See you later. I gotta go. Love you. Love you. All right, let's hop on in this unit. We'll get it restarted and backed out here. Squeezing in. It's a tight squeeze through there. Beginning engine restarting sequence now. Automated. Honks for safety. Backing up. Checking the screen. Checking the mirrors. Checking for noises. Checking the brakes. We're checking things. So far, so good. Okie dokes, rolling back into the same parking space. Let's hop on out and recheck the ride height measurements with the tape measuring device. So remember, uh, and check your notes if you wrote this down, because I didn't. We were uh, 37 and some change and 36 and some change on the rears. 
so let's just see where we land here. This front one looks like we're 37.5, maybe a tad under, okay. The rear, 37 and a half, maybe just a little bit over. I'm measuring from, from right here, by the way. That's not bad. right rear looks like that's right at 38 inches and the right front 37.5 we're almost perfect all the way around at 37 and a half victory Alrighty, folks, this one's good to go. That's going to be a conclusion on this particular episode. Uh, I do have some more work to do on this uh, on this Toyota right here, but we're gonna have to save that stuff for a different video because uh, this one is all timed out. The operation is complete. Ride height has no longer been squatted and it is now level like it should be. So uh, having said all that, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out right now. Uh, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, since you're here to the end, I'm going to assume that you did enjoy this video. And if my assumption is correct, I would only ask of you to communicate that to me effectively by tapping that like button down below. Do not forget to drop a comment or two while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a Toyota, in a leaf spring, in a transmission.